Today, Dr. Shave, I'd like to introduce the concept of babies and spontaneous human combustion. One of my favourite subjects. And why babies don't spontaneously human combust. That question has often troubled me. <laughs> As a newborn parent, are you really paranoid about your new baby? <laughs> no, not at all. I've just, I've just often wondered why babies don't spontaneously combust. <laughs> okay, well, spontaneous mm. human combustion is a really weird thing. There's, it is um, a really weird thing. It is really, really weird. There's 200 cases only in 400 years. And um, if you read Bleak House, in the preface to the book by Charles Dickens, he says, well, I researched this phenomenon called spontaneous human combustion. As far as I'm concerned, it's real. So therefore, in chapter whatever it is, I figured it was okay to get rid of an inconvenient character who I couldn't get rid of by any other way, so I'd just have him burst into flames. And that was the end of the matter of the book. Fantastic way to get rid of a character. They should employ that method in Home and Away or something. <laughs> no, I, well, I think in Neighbours, what they do is they send them to Queensland. <laughs> Kyle is still up there in Queensland. Yeah, with, oh, yeah. Jason? Is it Jason? <laughs> yeah, I think it's Jason. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, getting mm. back to spontaneous human combustion, um, which I'm not entirely convinced that exists. Really? Well, nobody will conveniently burst into flames in front of a medical panel lined up with all of the modern medical armamentarium um, instruments. All burst into flames, half, half burst into flames, and then tell people about it. Yeah, well, there, there was a case when I was in um, fifth, fourth year medicine where... And I was also then leaving to go and start up Quantum on ABC TV. That one of my fellow medical students told me about a friend of hers who would have flames coming out of her skin. And I rang her up, the, the girl, and she said, I don't want to talk to you. And wow, like Firestarter. I haven't seen the show. Mm. And proving what a wuss I was and how unsuited for television, I mm. said, Okay, I'll respect your privacy. <laughs> That's, that's not going to. That's not going to. Yeah, but uh, I was thinking medical, where the person comes first, not the media. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, in a normal house fire, which cannot get above eight hundred degrees C, mm. what happens is that the central trunk remains as burnt as recognisable, but the hands and the toes and the fingers and the feet and maybe the ankles and the wrists, they're all gone. But the central trunk remains. You can look at the trunk, you can find a pelvis, you can look at the pelvis and say it was a man or a woman. Oh, in a house fire? In a house fire, right. okay. which cannot get above 800 degrees C. Why is that? No, not enough, enough oxygen available. Material. Not enough. Well, for fire, you need the triangle, which is the starter, the fuel, and the oxygen. And you probably, if you had somebody with a big fan, you could mm. blow more air onto it and get above it. Mm. And, by the way, in a crematorium, they crank it up to 1,200 degrees C and even then are left with fragments of bone, which they then have to put in the uh, kitchen blender. wisdom machine, the mm. blender, and then mm. feed to the, give to the grieving relatives, mm. which they then throw over a cliff while watching seagulls wheel in the sky above them. Mm. Interesting. And it blows back in their face. Yeah. Anyhow, in spontaneous human combustion, it's the other way around. The central trunk is reduced to ashes mm. and the periphery, the arms, the legs, the feet, the fingers, the toes are intact. And if that's not proof enough that spontaneous combustion exists, well, that's then not what is? Well, it's it's a completely different form of combustion. Yeah, like, true. Well, uh, even so, there's a lot of hype in the newspapers, and you can't believe everything mm -hmm. you read. Until I read this article in a magazine, I do respect the new scientist, and it was by a cop, an ex-cop who'd been in his field as a scenes of crime officer, which is in the United Kingdom called a SOCO. Mm. What's this forensic thing they have in America, NCI or whatever? Forensic? CSI. CSI, okay. Mm. But the... Uh, he was a SOCO, mm. and he'd been one for half a century. And in his career, he'd retired now, he described two cases which mm. he put down, he described in his report as being just a house fire, but which weren't. Right. But he did so because he didn't want to get laughed out of the police force because it was just so odd. Mm. And in each case, the room was locked. Mm. The body pattern burning was with the central tongue gone to ashes and the periphery remaining. And so there, the feet and hands lying around. Yeah. Mm. And um, fat, fatty exudate on the walls of the room and on a lampshade. Mm. And the only source of heat in the room mm. was the light bulb. Mm. No cigarettes, no matches, no wood fire, gas fire, coal fire. It sounds like one of those fire. logic questions. Mm. So then I started thinking, okay, if this guy is not trying to pull my leg, uh, it pun, seems no like, pun intended. Oh, it, it seems that there's something really going on. But 
okay, so if it's real, you first you've got to start the body burning and then you've got to keep it burning. Let's mm. deal with the second one first. Mm. Um, in the concentration camps of the Second World War, it was discovered that once you get a body burning, it'll keep burning. Even though bodies are made of 50, 70, 80% fat, depending on the age of the person, mm. there's still enough fat to keep them burning. Like mm. you see the bodybuilders who are really, what's called term ripped, mm. they're down to about 4% fat. And that's really unhealthy and mm. difficult to maintain. Mm. They'll strip themselves down for competition, then rapidly get back to their... 10%, 20% fat, male, female, whatever it is. And some people are higher percentages than that, of course. But these are the people who Right, so a normal body will keep burning if you, as long as you can light it. As long as you can light it. Then that gets you the problem of, of can you light it. Now, here I'm going to ask you a, a question about your baby. Um, it's a rhetorical question almost. Mm. Did you know that in the first month of your baby's life, Shaverina, is it Shavel? I say Shavet. Uh, that Shavet um, could not shiver. I didn't notice that, Dr. Carl. You didn't notice no, it? No. But she kept but warm. Yes. So yes. how do you see the thing is that we've got to the stage now with the fixed, relatively fixed size of the, of the female pelvis and mm. the birth canal mm. and the stuff that you've got to fit into the brain. Mm. There's not enough room in the brain to fit in all the wiring that you want. And so there's not the stuff in the brain that then tells the muscles to shiver. The baby cannot shiver for the mm. first month of life. Mm. But isn't shivering an autonomic response? It is, but it's not there until the first month of life. But wouldn't all your autonomic res sort of brain bits come out? You oh, know, no, 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 no. No, like, for example, um, the most speech. Base areas of your brain? The, the, oh, yeah, breathing. Right. Yeah, yeah. breathing. Breathing yeah. and defecating and urinating mm. and eating. Which is all that matters, really. In, yeah, and, and so you, if you offer a nipple to a baby, it'll go suck, suck, suck in mm. the vast majority of cases mm. and do really, really well. Mm. Um, but higher forms such as writing poetry, inventing income tax and weapons of mass destruction, they are not available yet to the baby. <laughs> or even uh, being able to shiver. Why don't babies spontaneously combust? No. If they can't shiver. Why can't babies shiver? Because, well, well, sorry, not why can't they shiver, but how do they keep warm? How do they? Brown fat. Oh. Right. Now, the whole thing about fat. Fat was thought of as this stupid white fat that's all over the body and all it does is just store excess energy and it was really good back in Paleolithic times I used to think when food was short and any time you had any extra mastodon or dinosaur or whatever to eat that you'd go and eat it and you'd build up a bit of fat which is store get you through the bad times but, but fat was basically a stupid organ cell type in fact they've discovered it's actually quite intelligent it has all sorts of chemicals associated with it leptin and there's, there's white fat and then there's brown fat mm. brown fat turns energy directly into heat. Right. Now, that's pretty amazing. That's how your baby keeps warm. The energy is called AD, ATP, adenosine triphosphate. If you want to follow this up further, look on Wikipedia for decoupling of oxidative phosphorylation. And one of my um, lecturers actually uh, had a situation with a woman who'd uh, taken a chemical that did this to her. It decoupled oxidative phosphorylation. She accidentally committed mm -hmm. suicide, had been trying to commit suicide in, in, in a way that was crying for help, but not really, and she drank this liquid. And, and um, he went to, as a junior medical doctor, he was, she was in a darkened room just lying there quietly, and he went into the room just to see how she was, and she didn't respond. So he touched her gently on the forehead to see what the temperature was, and she said she was burning hot, really, really hot, and then she gave a scream and then pr promptly died. Okay. Leaving him feeling very difficult. But she didn't burn up. She didn't get a person to fly. I know, but would she but, have if he just left Well, we don't, know. we don't know. We well, don't that's know. what I'm saying. Is this yeah. how spontaneous combustion so, happens? So, we do know, firstly from the Nazi concentration camps and from experiments done with pigs in California, mm. that if you dress a pig in a singlet or a T-shirt and then start it burning, it'll keep on burning and the, the clothes will act as a wick. Right. The hard part is how you get him burning. With the brown fat, so originally we used to think that only babies had brown fat mm. and that adults did not have brown fat mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. until about eight years ago an endocrinologist, a hormone person, went to a radiologist, X-ray person type lecture. He was waiting for a friend. Mm. And there he, the radiologist would say, oh, we're seeing this here in the back and there's a bit of subscapula underneath the scapula, underneath the shoulder blade, brown fat. And there's a bit of brown fat. And they kept on saying brown fat. And he went up to him and said, look, Mate, you're wrong. There is no brown fat in adults. And the radiologists all just turned around at him and said, 
we see it all the time. And then they started thinking about brown fat. So here's my theory, mm. that if spontaneous human combustion is real, if it is, an adult who normally has a small variable, we don't know how much brown fat adults have on average, that, that's how little we know mm. about our bodies, mm. they will develop an abnormal amount of brown fat mm -hmm. or will go into a runaway reaction. Mm -hmm. And then if they're wearing clothes, mm. they'll have the wick reaction and they'll spontaneously human combust. If spontaneous human combustion is real, which it may be or may not be. I think you've hit the nail on the head there, Dr. Carl. Except for one thing. What? If you're really worried about spontaneous human combustion, mm. go naked. You won't have the wick effect. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Carl. Thank you. We are controlling transmission. I don't understand what's going on here. Yeah.